Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be going over the cover letter and how to write a stellar one. Okay. So when I think, when you think of writing the cover letter, I want you to turn the tables a little bit. That's why I have a picture of a table with two chairs. Whenever you're applying for a job, you think of, oh, I need this job. I want this job. So you're trying, to, and in your mind, you're trying to say how, how you're good enough to be part of this job. I want you to turn the tables around and think about if you were hiring, who would you want to hire? You want to hire someone that has something to offer. You want to hire someone that has ideas of how they're going to help. So if you think about if you could select anyone to be your personal assistant with your work, with your TA, with everything that you have to do, who would you pick as, as the person that knows everything that you need help with? Okay, so that's sort of the um, mindset that you want to reframe is don't think about, oh, I need to get a job, but I am here to offer these services to you. And this is how we match with our interests. So here's an example of a cover letter. Okay, so what you're going to write on top are the same, the same header as your resume that we just talked about. So your name and the coordinates. So your email, your phone, and your LinkedIn URL. Over here, you're going to have the business header of the hiring manager. So you're going to have their name, their title, the address of the company. So if you were to mail this letter, it should be it should get to them just by this business header. You're going to have the date on this side. And then over here, Dairy Hiring Manager. It's nice to have a name, but if you don't have a name, then you can write Hiring Manager or Hiring um, Selection Committee, whatever um, that industry um, has. And then this first statement. Okay, so most students, uh, when they think about, oh, what should I write in the first statement? Most of the time I see, I am a fourth year grad student in such and such. I'm a fifth year PhD student in such and such. I haven't been on the other side. If I am screening hundreds of candidates, I know that I'm screening senior PhD students or senior master students or senior undergrad students because it's on your resume. So what you wanna do is you wanna say, well, what can you bring? How are you going to shine? is telling people what you can bring. So here's an example. I offer five years of biochemistry research. Okay, so that's the PhD research. And outreach organizational skills. And my previous engagements with SciReach, Sci Outreach. So this must be a science outreach position to the position of science communicator to company X. Okay, so already, right away, the reader knows, oh, this is what they can bring. This is how they can help us. To strengthen your pathways program in the mission of STEM outreach to Canada's youth. And then, so this part you are getting from the website, from any detailed information that they have on their website, on their mission, their uh, values, their um, whatever they're headed towards. So you might want to expand if necessary with a second sentence or keep it like that. So the first sentence, the first paragraph is all about right away how you can help their team grow, how you can help their team to strengthen. Now the second paragraph is going to be the bulk of your cover letter. And right now I've made it short just to give you an, an idea, but it should be at least at least at bare minimum, half of the text on your cover letter, if not maybe 70% of the text you see. Okay, so the middle paragraph is talking about what you can do for them. So here's an example. As demonstrated by my outreach experiences since high school, I bring my dedication and knowledge of the biocommunications network to your organization in hopes of supplementing the I Can campaign. So you're talking about your experience, how that is going to strengthen the position that you want to apply for. Okay, So that's what you want to be writing. It's about what you can do for them. This entire second paragraph we talked about in the previous uh, video, let's say the example of Cyclica or DNA software, if you have published in um, drug design or 
um, optimizing thermodynamics of nucleic acids, which is what those companies do, that's what you're going to be writing here. How you can help them as a scientist, how you can help them as a team player. And do not forget to talk about what we talked about in the previous slide about addressing technical skills, but also your other core competency skills. So it's not just all about the research. Okay, so that's your technical, but the core competencies of outreach, problem solving, teamwork. Okay. Then the third paragraph is thank you for your time and consideration. Should you have any questions, please contact me at such and such, your email and your phone number. And students ask, well, why did we put it in here? It's already up there. Well, that way, while, you're re while they are reading, they feel, wow, this was a great cover letter. They can just call you right away. They can contact you right away. It's just in there. If the job description says, do not call us, we'll call you, then leave it that way. But if they don't have that, some job description actually have, if you have any questions, please call such and such, or please email so and so. If that contact name is there, then that's the person that you want to be writing to, but also contact them and ask them questions regarding that job. Ask them questions that you feel that would be pertinent in writing your cover letter. I had one colleague and she said, well, my name was there and we had 100 applications, but only two people called me. So use those resources if they have it. And if they don't uh, have a specification of don't call us, we'll call you, then in this third paragraph, you can write, um, I will contact you within two weeks to make sure you receive my application. Okay, so it's not asking them, oh, did I get an interview? But it's more uh, assurance that you sent them an application. Okay, and to let them know that you have applied. Okay. So after we go through this in class, what I also like to do here is, is that the other group activity is that you're going to take the resume you wrote from the job from, from the previous video, and then you're also going to write a cover letter for that job um, using this template. And then students bring the cover letter in, and we're, again, we go through peer review, we exchange cover letters, I give them a template on what to look for. And that way, this peer review process gives them more feedback. And then students take the resume, the cover letter, they take it away with all their feedback, and they rewrite it. And after they rewrite it, then they submit it to me. I give them feedback, and then they're given a grade. And then with that grade, there's tons of feedback. And then they have the option to rewrite this job application and I take the higher of the two grades. So this uh, sort of iterative, generative process of learning is not just submit in one report and there you go, but it's something that you can Im continually improve on throughout the semester. So let's say you applied and you got the job. I mean, you got an interview. What do you do in that case? So in my next uh, video, we're going to be talking about the different interviews out there and some of the techniques that you may want to use.